Hi, and I'm back again. Uh, for the raspberry, you need to do a little bit more prep work than you do for the blueberries. They're a bit more um, complex. So I've got um, several different shades of green. You just pick whichever ones suit you. And we're going to make a little bit of a um, mixed cane. I don't want it even. I want it to be a little bit messy. Um, so that it, it does sort of represent nature as it's going on. Um, I've also got a, a little bit of a rod of Rubino. If you've got Gold Ruby, um, Gold Ruby Light, uh, uh, Sim Cranberry, any of those that colour range will work for, for this one. And you need some sort of razor or cutting tool. Now I've got a variety but this one is my favourite one. And it's probably one of the cheapest tools that you can buy, I think. It's about five or six pounds. Um, but a little butter knife, anything that, that creates a sharp edge will be fine. So let's start by um, making this twisty. And you'll probably find that I'll do this video in several sections. There might be lots of cuts on this, simply because I'm waiting for things to cool down and get sorted. to create this cane, which is literally a leaf cane, would be the, the, the fancy term for it, but it's just a mushed up stringer really. So I need to heat this base rod a little bit, because when I put the glass on it I need it to be warm so that it doesn't crack, and then um, whatever I'm going to use to um, create the, the variations in colour. I think I've got a petrol blue here and a lime green, and this one I believe is um, grass. But the label on it suggests it might be a Reichenbach colour, so I'll have to check for you later. So I'm going to pull down a couple of stringers. I don't need a lot, maybe an inch, maybe not even that much. Um, but I'm pulling a couple of lengths down. You don't have to make it exactly the same as mine, it's fine if it's different, it'll still work. This one is, is um, a pre-made stringer, a Fetra stringer, and it's quite useful because it can get in the gaps. Don't need to be too tidy with this. If I can find one, I'm thinking I'm going to put a little bit of uh, a transparent with it as well, just to pick the colours up when it goes on there. I tidied up a bit earlier and put a load of colours away, so... Oh, that'll do. There we are. I've got a um, transparent light brown there. Oh, what's left of a bit of a rod. I think I've moved the position of the camera a little bit, so I'm not sure if you can see it very well. And I'm, I'm, I'm just applying this down in between where there's slight gaps um, between the colours. Keep the heat going in all the way around, but you only want a little bit of heat. You don't want to distort this at this point. easier to apply these stripes of colour um, when your base speed has got a little bit of heat in it but it's not hot. So you need to keep it warm but you don't want it overly hot so that it's moving. There we go. Put as much or as little of this on as you want. The colours on this are your choice. It won't make any difference to the final product. There we go and start heating now. other end. Um, that's my opposite panty. I'm going to find something with a bit of substance to it. Do. 
that's a clear rod. It doesn't matter what you use really, I just wanted some another anchor. Take your time melting this in. Because you want an even heat again. You're always looking for an even heat. If there's dark spots, you know your heat is not even. I'm going to put a little bit of this clear rod that I've just picked up over the end. Um, just to stop any colours running because I've used a petrol and that does tend to bleed into other colours. Again, I'm not trying to keep these lines and stripes that I've put in straight because I'm, I'll be mixing them up shortly. I'm just trying to get the heat even at the minute and be twisting them all together and making a mush. When you're starting out, that's a, it's a good... Um, indicator of how even your heat is when you'll hear experienced lamp workers all the time talking about even your heat um, and, and a good indicator is um, an even colour when you're looking at your melted glass if there's a, a dark spot then the heat's not even I can start mushing this up now so I've literally twisted one into the other few times. There we go. I'm melting it back down. I'm just going to keep heating this now until I'm ready to pull it into a thick string. And I want a really quite thick one this time. This is going to be used um, for the, the leaves on top of the raspberry. There's, when you do um, make canes like this, you'll always get more than you need. So you don't have to make a new one every time, just put it to one side. I've got a little jar full of odd bits of canes. Um, and then you've got one when you're ready to go next time. This is almost ready to go. Take it out, keep it. Gradually, you want just a gentle movement at this point. I'm waiting for this heat to even out. This is going to be a good 3mm, if not slightly thicker, which is exactly what I want. and it's ready to start your raspberry. So the raspberry itself, um, I'm going to be using a base of clear and I've got Rubino and as I said earlier um, you use whichever one you've got even if it's a sim dark, uh, sim or a fetra dark amethyst it's absolutely fine. The darker you go the more you're going to change the look but nature it doesn't isn't perfect and you'll always get different looks in it. If you make it in um, an ink blue or a, or a dark purple instead, then it'll look more like blackberry, which again is not an issue. Um, I'm hoping I'm recording, I can't actually see the camera. So um, I need a razor tool, and again I'm using a 1.6mm mandrel. For, when I'm making fruit, that's what I tend to use because I, get, I find that I get better shaping, a more realistic shaping. And it, it's going to be a case of um, twisting the mandrel into certain positions to, to be able to get the best finish that I found over time. And it will take a little bit of practice. Um, 
very often when you start they look a little bit too cone shaped and you're starting off with a, a quite a rigid cone but the final product you don't want it to look too cone shaped but that will take practice and it will come and it does mean um, that you're learning how to move that mandrel into a position and, and the cuts where you can get it exactly how you want it but I, I've spent um, quite a lot of time working out the best position for me and you're probably going to have to spend a time working out the best positions for you as well so I'll light my torch and I'll get on I've had to open the door um, so you'll have to excuse me for the chicken start or you hear any odd noises turned um, my extraction off so that it's not quite so noisy in here. So the same way as we started the blueberry, a tiny cone. And I'm working with quite a small flame. And I quite like to work with these small flames when I'm doing this close work. There's a scummy bit on the end of this. Let me just get rid of this. When I'm working with a little bit of detail, I like these small flames. So again, I start off with a tiny spacer on the end. It'll be a bit difficult to see at this point because of using the clear, but I'm hoping once I go over to the Rubino, you'll be able to see it better. I have got a filter on the lens, but I'm not sure how good it is at the minute, or whether I've got um, the camera in a different position to what I'm used to. I won't know until I play this back later and watch it. So I'm going to start slowly building up a cone shape. As I do this, I concentrate the heat on the piece I'm working on and just use the radiant heat to heat the piece below and just an occasional dip in. And it's worth taking your time to get this base speed um, exactly right because it makes a difference on your finished product. second but you should hopefully be able to see um, how narrow a cone this is it's not a big fat cone it's um, a slender cone but it's a definite cone shape and you will need that when you're working on a cone you might find it easier to use your handheld marver um, and take it from the top rather than trying to roll it this way Very often we'll get a better finish and I'm literally putting a tiny bit of heat into this um, and then just rolling it gently against the marver. You don't want to distort this base in any way. So we're all about gentle heat on this type of bead. So hopefully you can see that that's a, a cone but it is a very slender cone shape. that warm at the back a bit and start melting your rubino or whichever colour you're using. And I'm flicking my mandrel completely upside down at this point because I want these dots as close as I can to the mandrel without actually touching it and I find the easiest position is from here. So I'm, I'm doing four dots equally spaced reasonably equally spaced again it hasn't got to be perfect um, right onto the edge of this bead I'm doing everything that I can to avoid hitting the mandrel itself a little bit of heat 
And at the minute, this Rubino looks very, very pale, but as, as it heats and cools, heats and cools, the colour starts to get darker. We're going to add a little bit more to each of these dots. I want them slightly bigger. And at this point, I'm trying to concentrate the heat just on the dots. I don't want to put any heat into the base bead if, if I can avoid it. Okay. This is quite difficult to see what I'm going to do now. I'm going to cut through the middle of each one. Uh, and on this first row, I'm cutting into the middle and back and forth. On the following couple of rows, I'm edging into the middle and just push in one direction. So heat, balance, push. If I do it um, on all of them, while these dots are quite large and next row the dots are going to be even bigger and I'm going to go in the space between the last two dots but I'm going to be pushing down to fill that space as well so I'll try and show you um, and hopefully you can see it so I'm swapping position you you see me swapping hand position a lot when I'm making one of these and it's just um, the way that I found it easiest to make them so into the middle and push down so that it spreads into that gap. It's quite a large dot. And carry on for the other three. Push down. concentrate heat on the dots just so that they start to round off nicely. I don't want to do anything else other than round them off a little bit at this point. And I'm trying to keep the heat off this base as well, the ones that I've already worked on on the previous row. Hence why there's so many different angles going on with the um, mandrel. So this time into the middle and then push And push. This is probably why I find this tool the easiest because I've got um, a flat edge there on there. And the next row will be exactly the same, but your dot is slightly bigger again. There you go. So this doesn't look right until it's finished right up until that point you, you think no the um, shaping is off but as it finishes you realize that it is actually okay so push down in between the two dots of the last round and do it all the way around so it's it's four dots every row however many you started off with. I start with four because I always find it easiest. Um, if your dots don't sort of meet up reasonably well, then either they're too small um, 
or your base bead was too large and it would be a case of adjusting to how you work so again concentrate the heat on the dots that you've just put in to round those off and just a little bit of heat on, on the base you don't want to distort those lines that you've just cut in there in and pushed out. And depending how big you made your cone in the beginning um, will depend how many rows of dots you need. I normally have um, between four and five rows. now just keeping a little bit of heat in this because I definitely don't want to distort all these cuts and same as before in between two dots from the previous row push down so that your glass spreads into the space between those two dots and when you try and do it yourself, you'll see what I mean. If this is hot enough, that glass will spread into those gaps when you push down, because I'm pushing quite hard. Um, not so hard that I'm flattening it out completely, um, but, it, but there's a fair bit of pressure going on to that. quite on my last row yet. Once I'm on my last row you'll say, see that I change direction again. Um, push in and down. And it's, it's a lot of repetition on this. So, you know, once you've got it, you'll be able to do it time and again. And as long as that base bead is about the same size, you'll get them, um, the finished product, roughly the same size. If you want them bigger, make your base bead bigger. If you want them smaller, make your base bead smaller. So this last row of dots is going into a different direction now. Um, so up until now I've been pushing everything downwards. This time I'll be doing as I did with the first row and curving it round towards the mandrel so I'll be going back and forth with the cutting blade. And I'm pulling off in a different direction as well. I'm pulling off this way where the others have gone straight up and down. probably see now what I mean about um, the Rubino developing its colour um, as, as you heat and cool because that's definitely um, more of a cranberry colour now so this time cutting back and forth going over the whole dot but you don't want these dots so hot um, that you're going to distort the shape completely so you just want enough heat in them that they'll move with glass so push down come back If you're using Rubino, you have to watch so you don't get too close um, to the flame tip because you, you will see lots of coming up and the colour goes sort of greyish, yucky. Um, 
so it's quite a good one for practicing the heat control room. Right, so my cane that I made earlier, that big fat stringer with all the mixed colours, is now going to be um, the leaves. So you're going in now, in between, as you've gone every other round, in between the, the dots from the previous round. So if you are a bit worried, add a small-ish dot and then go back. And again, I'm pulling them off this way, but I don't want them to be um, touching the mandrel because it'll distort the final bead. So I'm heating from a different direction completely this time, I'm heating face on. And these are nowhere near big enough, so I need to add extra in a second. But I'd use them as my starting point for where I need this to go. So again, it's four dots, um, and you want them quite big. Yeah, be generous with them. The more generous you are, um, the better they look at the final product. And I'm back to my flat tweezers again here these ones I want to be hot but I'm trying to keep the rest of the bead cool so all the heat is going into there so there's heat going into my main bead but nowhere near enough to distort anything the heat is concentrated onto those dots that I've just added I'm going to flatten them off but I still want to add more I flatten them off at this stage to make sure that they don't um, sag down onto the mandrel and distort the final bead. There you go, so add a bit more and add a bit of extra heat now into the rest of the bead. And again, um, you don't want this thing glowing, you don't want to distort any of those cuts you've made, you just don't want it to break either. So a nice big dot on top of the flattened dots that you've just put in. I turn it around this way, maybe you can. I'm hitting just um, the leaf dots. I can't hold it in that direction. I'm left-handed, but for some reason, I've always made um, beads as if I'm right-handed. I think it was probably because my original tutor, Ray Skeen, was um, a right-hander. So I learned from him, and I've just carried on doing it that way. just want enough heat in these dots so you can flatten them out and swing it round. Let me just put a little bit of extra heat in this and then I'll swing it round and hopefully I can show you. I'm not sure how much you can see. So with this next cut, I'm not cutting a line in um, into these the bleak part. I'm using the very edge of this razor tool to just drag down um, the edge of this dot. I'm not cutting into this leaf dot at all. Um, so I need a fair bit of heat into one spot and catch on the edge and literally pull that down. And repeat. the edge and pull down. Catch the edge, pull down. And the last one, and I'll try and show you um, what these look like when they're finished. There you 
go. And a little bit of heat again and pop it in the kiln.